Right, I'm here to present a little bit about my two weeks of experience working on Rust. So let's see how this goes. I've tried to use Rust and Bevy to render football data in three dimensions. Here's the contents of my presentation. First, I'll do a short introduction of myself. Then, why are we even modeling football data in 3D? Uh, why in Rust? And then I'll get into the, the project specifics. But first, a little bit about me. I'm Joris Beckers, and I've been a football analytics consultant for six years now. I do most of my work in Python and SQL, and I try to share as much as I can on Twitter and on my GitHub, uh, although that doesn't always work out. This is what generally uh, tracking data that was just talked about is visualized as. So you have a top-down view, you see the velocity vectors to indicate how fast the players are going, and then the thing at the bottom you can, you can ignore for now. So why are we trying to do this in 3D? Well, I'm anticipating that within a couple of years, <coughs> clubs and federations will have access to body pose or skeletal data, and you can't really animate that in two dimensions, and I'm saying that because Hawkeye signed a deal with the NBA in basketball, to have that body pose data, I think starting this season. So it's definitely uh, getting to a place where we can try to use it for football as well. And then there are some benefits to doing it in three dimensions, even in 2D. So currently for this project, I'm using still this sort of two dimensional data, but we can change the camera angle, potentially see what a player is seeing from a player a point of view. And if we want to get really fancy, we might be able to do something with virtual reality, although and that's not for now. So for those of you who don't know what body pose data is, this is an example that I pulled off of YouTube. You see that the skeletons of the, the players in the, on, the, on the screen is sort of estimated. And if we have this, we could potentially animate this back in 3D, 3D and then have it look at it from all different angles. So yeah, that's why we're trying to do this in 3D, sort of a preparation for the future. Uh, why in Rust? Well, Rust is a modern language. It only has existed for only a couple of years. It's a lot faster than Python, and it's a lot more simplified than other languages that are, that are a lot faster than Python. And because I think that learning a new language is always a good idea. This is something I worked on in 2021 when I learned Flutter and Dart to build mobile apps. And I'm not really building any mobile apps anymore, but it, learning a new language like that really helped me develop my Python skills as well. And my SQL skills a little bit too. So let's get into a short preview so you guys are aware of what I'm trying to work towards. This is what it's going to look like. I will show some moving pictures at the end, but I don't want to give everything away in the beginning. So first, let's talk a little bit about Rust. Like I said, I have two weeks of experience, so trust me, all of this is accurate. If you want to start a project, so installing Rust is the easiest thing ever. Uh, if you want to start a project, you can you get a command called cargo. So it's kind of in Python like pip or conda, and you can just start a new project. Starting a new project will give you a couple files. Amongst them is a main file. And within that main file, you have a main function. And this function is the first thing that executes when you first build, compile your code, and then run your code. For now, this is uh, most of what you need to know. The other thing is there's a, a cargo.toml file that you also get in the beginning. And you can add your packages in here. So it's like a requirements.txt file and with some other stuff in there as well. Uh, there are major differences to Python. For that, I refer to the Rust programming language book, which is free and open source. And like working through that is, is a really good learning experience. And so now get into Bevy. So Bevy is sort of like a package that is built in Rust, and it's a free and open source game engine. It's only been around for a couple of years, so that's a positive, but also a little bit of a negative because it's still in full development. I think it's currently at like version 0.1 or something like that. So it's really, really early, early stages. You can use it to build 2D and 3D games and it's cross-platform, although not yet for mobile, but that's coming apparently. So in Bevy, 
So this is the main function that we just saw. So if you want to build a Bevy app, the first thing you do is you instantiate an app and you tell it to create a window and then you tell it to run and it will create an empty window for you. Uh, so that's the very start. And then you can add all sorts of other plugins to it. For example, you can add plugins before the startup of your program. So we want to load assets before the program starts or before the program shows the window because otherwise the user will just be waiting with an empty window. We can add things to startup. So for example, we might want to, I'll get into what this, all of this exactly means, but you might want to build a, a level like in a game, you put all the, all the 3D models there. And then there's another thing you can do is for every frame it generates, you can update something. Uh, or basically all the things you can like move around stuff, for example, players. So if you do all of that, like with the functions that I will explain later, you'll get something like this. And yeah, that's a little bit dark. So because this is a game engine, we actually need to add our own light. And you can, I just added an ambient light so it lights everything the same from all directions. You can add fancy lighting. You can like, try to model like stadium lights or whatever, but I only had two weeks to do this, so I didn't I model stadium lights. So let's, so this is what that looks like. It's the preview, it's, it's, it's well lit. You can see what's going on. You can see all the models. Now let's talk a little bit about how we actually get these models, where they come from and what the data is that we use. So go back to the example uh, one more time. You can see that we have a stadium, we have a pitch, we have players, we have a ball, we have a goal. And all of these are separate 3D models that I definitely did not build myself. You can just grab them for free or pay for them if you want more fancy models. It's like uh, Sketchfab. In the end of this presentation, I will link to wherever you can get all these models. Then you can download these models and you can use Blender, which is generally used for VFX and other sorts of stuff to model a 3D stuff. And we're only using that here to scale the model so if the model is huge you can put it back to a normal scale or you can change how it looks and the most important thing is we use it to export from a dot blend or some other 3d file to gltf or glb which is i think the only 3d model file uh, type that bevy currently supports so if you load it into a blender this is what it looks like like I said i didn't really do much in blender other than load it and then export it back to the correct file type. Uh, what I did do was I added my logo as the, as the advertising because I thought that was fun. All right, so how do we load these models actually in Bevy with code? So we do that before startup. So like I said, we want to load all, the, all our models before we show the user anything. Otherwise, if we don't do that, there will be a black screen and then the, the, like the small size models will load first and then at the end you'll, like a stadium pops up, which is not great. So the asset loading function has commands and an assets variable and we can use the commands to add or remove components. We can use it to move components and we'll, we can use it to modify components. I will, in a little bit, I will show how that looks. I'm gonna update the player locations and then we have something called an asset server and in the asset server we can load all the images that we want we can load all the 3d models that we want we can even load sounds but i didn't have any sounds so i didn't load any sounds so here inside into the commands like we insert our game resources and for this example i'm specifically pointing towards the stadium just because my examples will follow the stadium. i'm not going to show how to like insert all the different models because it's basically the same thing yeah, so that's the, the inserting of the components. And now we also need to load our data. So I'm adding another function uh, also before startup. So we load our data before startup. Uh, this is sort of what the data looks like. So on the left, you'll see this is one frame of tracking data for one player. So you have an X, uh, an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and the components of the velocity vector, a player ID, and an indication of the players from the home team or the away team. And then uh, we load this as a JSON. In Rust, you need to specifically tell Rust what sort of variables it's going to expect. So we need to, that's what we do on the right. 
which is kind of a pain when you're using JSON with a lot of fields, but it is what it is. So we have coordinate data. Our coordinate data is at 10 frames a second. And uh, I don't really know why I put this there, but the center of the page is at 0, 0,0. Uh, the only reason why this is helpful is that in our game engine, the center point is also 0, 0, 0,0. So it makes it a little bit easier. We don't have to do any translations. So now we're going to build a basic scene. This is the next function in our, in, in our sequence. This is like building a level. So you put, in, uh, you put in all the stuff that you want, and that doesn't really have to change, or you put all the players in and then change them afterwards. But just, you have to just put everything there. Like in a game, you would put like, mountains and cars and all that kind of stuff. So we do that here through commands again. We insert the scene bundle. The scene bundle is basically something that helps you to place a 3D model in a certain place. You can see that we transform it. So we offset it a little bit. The only reason I did that was to match the 0, 0 of the pitch of the 3D model with the 0, 0 that we have like in the game world. So it, it all fits <coughs> nicely. And then we insert a name. And the only reason we put the name there is for debugging purposes. So it's easier to find your assets. So in the game engine, this is now what that what that stadium looks like. As you can see, we don't have a pitch yet, we don't have goals yet, we don't have players yet, we don't have a ball yet. All of those are separate models, so we have to put them in there as well. Like I said, I'm not going to show you like how to do most of that, but if you do all of that, it looks like this. And also the camera controls you have to put in there yourself. Luckily I found a really easy tutorial that helped me out to do that. So this is, we've now set everything up except for our players. So we need to put our players in there. This is a little bit different because we're relying on the data to put the players in the correct position. Here the index refers to the first frame of the data. So we start when building our basic scene, we put all the players at the first frame, like where we know that they should be. And so we do that for the first frame or for the zero frame, I should say. For every player we check if they're the home team or the away team, and then because we have that data, if the player is the home team, we give them the blue player model, and if they're the away team, we give them the red player model. And then we can transform this uh, player model individually and put it at the correct coordinates. You see here, the, it puts it at x, comma zero, dot zero, and then puts it at y. So in Bevy, y and z are flipped. And then we also give the 3D model an orientation by using the velocity vector and the angle that that creates. And this way, the players rot rotated in the correct orientation. Something else that we do, which is uh, for every 3D model that you insert, you can give it a certain like extra features. In this case, we tell the model that this is of type player, and we give it a player ID. I will show later why it's valuable to be able to tell the engine that this is a player. And then give the player the player ID so we can identify specifically what player we're looking for. And now this is what it looks like. This is the preview that I showed in the beginning. So, Right, so the only thing now we need to do is like have the option to update our players and move them around. So how do we do that? We do that by updating the player position at every frame. and by doing a dot add system, this is like you can add multiple of these, but they, they run at every individual frame. So here is the, uh, the reason why we added assigned a player component to each player. In Bevy, you can query for your, let's say, your 3D models or, or what have you. And here we just ask the, the engine for all the, for all the 3D objects that were assigned the value of player. <laughs> And we ask for their transform. And using this transform, we can update the x and y and z location. Uh, we also need the match data to figure out what coordinates we need to use. And a very helpful tool is we can, we can ask for the time. And using this time, we can figure out the, the time that has elapsed from the previous frame to the current frame. And we need that because our football data is in 10 frames per second and it's fixed at 10 frames a second. But a game engine updates somewhere between 30 and 60 frames per second, but it changes depending on like how much RAM you have and like what other stuff is running in your computer. And because of this, we need to interpolate between, let's say, the first frame and the second frame to figure out where we are 
for the in-between frames. So let's say we have two, two data points, one at the first frame and one at the second frame, and but the game updates a lot more. So at every blue line, the game updates, but we don't have any data for this. So let's say we want the data at this uh, specific moment. We can find a value alpha, and that just tells you how much to weigh the first coordinate set and the second coordinate set. And we can find that because of this time delta, or delta in seconds. And we need to keep track of the time that has elapsed before, so that's t total. We just add up all the time since the first frame. And then we can use that to interpolate the exact coordinates where we are at the frame, at the in-between frame that we need. So this is a calculation we do at every updated step. And then this is updating the player location for each player. So this, this is inside, let's say, a for loop where we loop over each individual player. We calculate the interpolation of the x and the z, which is the y. Uh, it's complicated. So we, we update the x and the z components, and then this automatically means that the players will start like moving towards the new, or they'll, well, they don't move. You just update it. It looks like they're moving. And then we also update the rotation, so we interpolate the rotation vector. I'm not 100% sure I'm doing that correctly, as you can see by me saying buggy and spinny and whatever, but it works, or it sort of works, so that's good enough for now. Let me show you the results. This is what it looks like if it's moving. So like I said, you can, ca you can move the camera anywhere you want. This is just me pressing some buttons, trying to make it look fancy. I implemented a pause button so you can pause it and keep the camera running and then someone somewhere scored a goal. There is one more thing. So someone asked me about doing it from a point of view of a player. So this is I uh, this is not in the code that I'm sharing yet, but the camera is now fixed, let's say, on top of the head of one player or it's in that location. And so we can see kind of what the player sees. As you can see, it moves around a little bit. The, like the camera is fixed to one point, so it's not perfect yet, but this, is, this might help understand what players are seeing or what they're not seeing. And this is where, let's say, my hope for virtual reality one day comes in. Let's talk a little bit about some future work. So like I said, I wanted to do this for body pose data. So I tried my hand at some more blender stuff. So you have to apply this like skeleton rig uh, to a model. I'm not sure if this is the, I used the, or I like spent $20 buying a Ronaldo, uh, like old Ronaldo model to animate it. I think this is it. Uh, I like I added the skeleton and I hoped to be able to update it, but it was a lot more complicated than I thought it would. So I, I haven't figured that part out yet. Uh, the main reason why it's so complicated is like if you use a game engine, generally they pre-animate all the things. So if a player is running in a game engine, the running animation has been pre-animated. But here we need to uh, like interpolate all the coordinates of all the bones at whatever, 60 frames a second from your, let's say, 10 frames a second data. So there's a lot of calculations, and then there's some other complicated stuff that I haven't figured out yet. Some other things I would like to do, for now this just loads like a basic sequence from a JSON, so I would like to be able to just pull any, pull any game moment. Bevy supports building interfaces, so you can make menus and all that stuff. So I want to improve the camera controls. It would be cool if, let's say, like in a game, you could use the mouse to to point where the camera needs to go because it, it, it can't do that right now. And then obviously I want to do something with virtual reality, but Bevy doesn't support it yet. There's a random package on GitHub that does. Yeah, like I said, I'm sharing the code that I used for this on GitHub. Just a couple of references. Like I said, the Rust book is really good. And then uh, Logic Projects, like without that YouTube channel, I don't think I would have been able to figure any of this out. The, uh, this guy builds basic games in Bevy and tells you how to do it. And then he also shares all his code. And yeah, like I said, I needed that. Otherwise, I would not be here.